Welcome back to Zephyr Travels. This week we're getting ready for our trip out west and I want to go through some of the things we're doing to prep for that. One of the things obviously you can see is we're washing the truck and make sure it's all nice and clean. I always like to have a nice clean truck before we take a trip. But we've also done some things like trip planning and some safety precautions that we're doing, um, getting this truck serviced, uh, getting the dogs groomed. So there's a lot of little things that we've been working on trying to get ready because this is going to be our longest trip in both time and distance and so we want to make sure that we've you know taken the time to prepare and get everything set up and ready to go so follow along we'll first take you to the getting the truck service and some of the things that i needed to get done for that and then we'll go on to some of the other things so let's get back to work This morning we're taking the truck in for service. We are having the oil changed and the tire rotated, but we're also going to have them look at a couple things just to make sure everything's in good shape. Um, I'm going to have them check the fan belt and possibly the belt tensioner because it does make a little bit of noise when you accelerate. And I want to make sure that there's not an issue there and possibly we just replace the belts if needed. Also going to have them check the battery just to make sure that it's in good shape. It's you know five years old, so you know we're at that point where batteries start to fail, and I want to make sure I'm not going to have a problem with it while we're going. You know, you want to take care of the simple things when you can. We're also going to have them do a recall on the truck where they need to replace the master cylinder, so we'll get that done. Now I've also replaced the brakes on the truck. I did that myself, so new rotors, pads, everything. So that in that aspect it's in it's in good shape. And we get this done and you know check this off the list. Hopefully they don't find anything else that they're that they're concerned about and we can you know start this next uh, venture without any problems with the truck. Well here's the dealership we uh, heading to. It's not the dealership I bought the truck from. I bought the deal the truck out of state but I have done a lot of business with this dealership and have bought numerous cars from here and would have bought this truck from them if they had one that I wanted at the time. Well, now I got the truck washed and it's, you know, I just still got to dry it and get that done. But I thought, well, I'm doing that. Why don't you watch this video of me and showing you how we plan our trip? Because that's been asked uh, in the comments a couple of times, is how do we go about planning a trip? And I wanted to share with you some of the tools that I use, some of the ideas I have. They may not work for you, but you know, check them out and hopefully you get a couple good tips out. So watch that now. I've got to get this thing dried. I want to share with you how I map out our trip. And what I'm looking at here is what you know when i know where we want to end up and and where we're starting from but what about the places in between and i've tried doing this with apple maps and apple maps doesn't allow you to do waypoints in between google maps allows you to do that but it's not that easy and it's a little difficult to do it and it's also you know kind of hard to save them you know easily so it's not very user friendly is what i'm getting at here so someone recommended to me uh, a website called Road Trippers. And so I have it up here. And what's nice about this is, first of all, there's a free version of it that allows you to do seven um, waypoints, uh, se seven points on a trip, which works out pretty good. Um, you can pay um, and get the paid version of this. And with that, you get unlimited. So you could plan out a bigger trip. But what I found is you can actually plan your trip in segments you know do seven points in it and then start a new section of your trip and do another map for that i've started here with our trip and so i've got our end destination being grand canyon williams uh, koa and our starting point at rochester new york and so you can see it, it maps out the trip for me here and you know it gives me basically you know, all the interstates and such but what i'm looking at is where, where do I want to stop for the night is really what I'm looking for. And so I can start looking at here and I can say, okay, Indianapolis might be a good point for my first drive. And I'm picking Indianapolis because it's roughly 10 hours or so drive from Rochester. 
it works out good because I typically want to try to get as far south as I can when I'm leaving in November and December and January because I want to get into a little bit warmer weather before I stop for the night. Even though I'm, I'm making a little bit of a trek west here, this does get me down south, so hopefully my weather will be a little bit more comfortable. And then, so then from there, you can start looking at where do, where do your other stops. And so, you know, Indianapolis to maybe St. Louis, that might be a good drive. St. Louis to Springfield, Missouri looks good. And then we've got Oklahoma, Albuquerque, and, you know, all the way to Arizona. You start getting an idea of where you want to stop. And so then you can go in and plug those points into the map. So now here we have the map where I've actually plugged in those waypoints. If you look over on this section, now you can see I put in Anderson, Indiana because there's a casino there. And I found this casino by looking up the um, places to stay in Indiana overnight for free. And that casino popped up. So I put that in there as a first spot to stop. And so that's 547 miles, about eight hours. Throw a couple extra hours into that for what I call RV time. You know, you know typically you gotta stop for gas, meals and such. And so that's about a 10 hour day. From Indiana to Springfield, Missouri, here I picked a Bass Pro Shop because I know you can overnight in those parking lots a lot nicer than staying at a Walmart. And so I put that in there as a, a next destination. And so there's the address for the Brass Pro Shop in Springfield. So that now is um, 503 miles, about another eight hour drive. That, you know, two long days of driving, but it gets as far south as quickly as we can. Then from there, you know, I, I shortened up the drives to about 400 miles or so. And, you know, I picked, uh, I found a campground, uh, free camping at Black Cradle Campground in Clawford, Oklahoma. So that would be a, a stop there. And then um, found a place in Albuquerque, New Mexico to stay, you know, and that's another, you know, 400 miles. And then we actually decided we were going to st stay the night at, or stay for a little bit around Sedona. So we found Sedona RV Park drive down to there, another 400 miles. So you can see I've broken the trip down to 400 mile segments as best I can. Now, I'm trying to be fairly flexible in this. So a lot of these places are places that I know I can go in overnight for free, but it doesn't mean that I'm gonna stick to this plan, but it just gives me a, a rough plan and, and a rough daily drives. What we're probably gonna end up doing is we travel down this route. Once we get down through Missouri, and actually probably from St. Louis through um, Oklahoma, New Mexico and stuff, we start picking up close to Route 66. So that now becomes something interesting to look at and, and explore while we're traveling. And we have a few extra days in our, tr in our trip to do that, slow down when we get into these areas and you know, spend more time you know, checking in some of the sites you know, that we can, you know, like the Cadillac Ranch and different things along Route 66. So we'll start researching some of that stuff and start adding that to our itineraries of things and places we want to stop and see. So what I would do is I will take this list of destinations into my notes app. And so you can see I've got my, all my information of where we're going to be, you know, where I, I think we could stop or may want to stop and anything that I happen to have a reservation at. So here I've got, you know, reservations here at um, the Sedona RV Park, Grand Canyon Williams. And so I can now go take these addresses and go out to the truck and plug them into the truck as um, a trip plan and use the GPS in the truck because I really like using the truck GPS over using a cell phone or something. So I hope you found this interesting and helpful. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and we'll reply back to them and, and share. If you've got another way of doing it for your trip planning, let us know. We'd love to hear what you do. The truck is all washed and I'll show it to you now. And then after that, we will take a look at some of the safety precautions that we are taking for this trip. Obviously the world has changed a lot in the last eight months. You, even though RV travel is a safe way to get out and see and, and you know enjoy this country it there's still a lot of safety precautions that you know you really need to start to take nowadays so we want to take a few minutes and kind of show you through some of that stuff 
that we're doing for us that doesn't mean it's perfect or anything like that but you know we've kind of listened to the experts and come up with what we think is what we, precautions we need to take so in this part of the video I want to talk about personal safety and things have changed a lot in the last few months from the way it used to be when you traveled and the really only thing you really need to carry with you was a first aid kit now this is still very important and we keep this in the truck and the reason we do that is because most of the time the truck won't be very far from us and so we want to be able to be able grab this kit if we need it you know if we're out on a hike or we are you know out about sightseeing or we're at the trailer this kit will always be with us personal safety has changed so much in the recent months and one of the big things that you know you can do for personal safety today is to wear a mask and we make sure that we have plenty of masks both cloth masks that we can wear around plus we have some N95 disposable masks that we keep just in case of an emergency and we have some regular those blue disposable masks that we keep in the glove box of the truck and just in case we forget to bring our mask with us when we go out we've always got one near us the other thing too that today that you need to make sure you do is you know sanitize your hands you know and we carry these two bottles of hand sanitizer we keep them in the truck in the door and anytime we leave the truck and come back to it we spray our hands down so they are constantly sanitizing our hands making sure things are clean you can also have the sanitizer wipes and we've got a couple things of those um, I talked to my doctor this week and, and about how to take precautions and one of the things that she suggested was to wipe down the touch surfaces in your trailer every couple of days with a you know a hand, uh, sanitizer wipe you know those uh, bleach related type so we've got a couple packages of those we'll probably also keep some in the truck we carry alcohol now we've got it we picked up a couple bottles of this I mean in a pinch this can be hand sanitizer but it can be you know clean a wound or whatever you need to do hand soap I want to make sure you'll be able to wash your hands frequently when you're out you know one of the things that you want to do is every time you return home wash your hands make sure that you take that extra precaution even though you sanitized your hand when you got in the vehicle you want to wash your hands so that's what we're doing for personal safety for our trip if you've got any suggestions or ideas that you do that you want to share put them down in the comments we'd love to hear from you I also want to talk a little bit about home security because obviously you can take personal security and make sure that you are safe as you travel but you want to make sure that your home is safe for when you know while you're gone and nothing happens and some of the things that um, you should be doing to make sure that is you know talk to your neighbors let you let some trusted neighbors know that you are traveling you know in our case we let the neighbors across the street know we let a couple of neighbors on each side know and we gave them our contact information so if anything happens that they see anything suspicious they can contact us and let us know we also called the sheriff's department and they have what's called a vacation watch where when they patrol the neighborhood they will know that this house the people are away and so they will look at anything and make sure there's nothing suspicious they also will look and see if there's any suspicious cars in a driveway in our case all our cars will be locked in the garage so there should not be any vehicles in a driveway if they see something they will check into it you want to also make sure that you have the non 911 phone number for your local sheriff or police department because if you're on the other side of the country and you call 911 you're going to get the local 911 dispatch and you want to get the one for where you, you live so you want to program in the regular 10 digit phone number for your sheriff's department into your phone so that if you have any issues or a neighbor contacts you and say something's not right you should check into this you can easily call the sheriff's department not 911 and they can dispatch a sheriff or a policeman out to check on your home while you're away there's I've also created a to-do list because I'm big about to-do lists because some of the things that I came up with you know obviously you want to stop your mail you want to stop any newspapers that come to your home you also want to install some motion lights so we have lights on the outside of the house that are motion activated we also have lights inside the house that are Wi-Fi controlled and so that we can control and set a pattern with these lights and have certain lights turn on at certain times during the day and go off to make the house look like it's lived in um, Wi-Fi cameras so that you can monitor your home 
from remotely. So we've set up a few cameras around the house and inside the house so that we can check on things to make sure everything looks okay. Some of the things that I do also do, because we're going away during the winter months, I want to make sure that the house is safe in case we have a power outage or anything like that that could cause the heat to go off. So before we leave, I turn off the water through the house, I turn off the hot water heater, and then I open up a faucet in the basement and in our laundry sink, and then I go through all the rooms and I open up each of the faucets and I let them drain down to the basement. That way, there's no water in any of the pipes, you know, except for in the basement area that could possibly freeze. I also take RV antifreeze and I pour it in all the drains of all the sinks and shower and such. I make sure the toilet has the toilet tank and the toilet is drained. I'll put RV antifreeze into the bowl of the toilet too. That way, if the power does go off while we're gone, it's less likely that something's going to freeze and cause damage. And with having the water turned off while we're away, even if there is a problem like that, you're not going to have water spraying in your house and, and causing a mess. You also want to make sure that you lock all your windows, you lock all your doors, make a list of all your windows and make sure that you know how many windows are in each room and that you check that off and make sure that those windows are locked before you leave. You want to make sure you lock your doors. If you have a screen door that's in front of your house, if you can lock that, lock that door. You want to make sure that you have trusted friends and family that have a key to access your home and know how to access it. If you have an alarm system, make sure your friends and family know about that alarm system, know how to turn that off so that you don't have an issue with that while you're gone. Things that you need to do as you, um, before you leave is turn off any power accessories in your house that you don't need to run. Unplug your TV, unplug your stereo system, your computers, all that stuff. Make sure that they're off because those draw power while you're away. Turn down all your thermostats. We set our thermostats at 50 degrees while we're gone. It's just enough to make sure that the house has heat in it and will protect it in case, you know, cold weather. And probably enough heat if the power went off for a, a day or so, it wouldn't freeze up. But at the same time, you're not heating the house. You don't need to heat the house to 70 degrees while you're gone. You want to go through your refrigerator. Make sure that you take out any food that could spoil. So depending on how long you're gone, you may need to empty your refrigerator out of most everything in there, or you may just need to take a few items out that you're going to take with you. In our case, we're going to empty the refrigerator out, either the things we're going to take, or we're just going to discard items that we don't think we're going to use. And then you don't want to turn your refrigerator off. It doesn't cost a lot to run a refrigerator, and it will make sure that the refrigerator doesn't have any mildew issues while you're gone, because that could be a problem if the doors happen to close. And same thing with your cupboards. You want to go through your cupboards. Is there any food there that could spoil, that could cause animals like mice or whatever to get into your house? You want to make sure that you take care of that. Um, these are just a few things that we do. Like I said, I have a list. If you're interested in getting a copy of this, let me know. Leave a comment below. Um, I can post it up on our Facebook page and you can get download it from there. What is that? She's hanging down. Zach! She's sitting there. Yeah. Come on. Oh. There you go. There. Now we got both of them just back from the groomers all cleaned up. Yeah. Looking good. Yeah. Another thing checked off the list of things to do for our trip. It smells get ready. good. Yeah. yeah. Well, Monty, I think it's about time we end this video, don't you think? What do you tell them? You tell them if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If they haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel. And make sure to hit that bell notification so that you can see more videos of you guys. Huh? That's right. I said, Zephyr and I are the stars. That's right, we're the stars of this channel. That's right. And the next time you see us, we'll be traveling across the country. On our next big adventure, huh? Say goodbye, everybody. Bye. Say goodbye, Monty.